Honestly, this is landscape photography at its simplest and it's incredible. All I'm doing is splitting my image up into thirds. I'm using the sand as one third, the sea as a second third, and I'm choosing different elements in the background as a third third. I've applied my six stop filter just so I could play around with two or three second exposures just to get a bit of movement in that water. Really, really minimalistic. But the good thing about this, I've got my longer lens on as well. The good thing, that's fine, let me just, I'll throw you guys in so you can see. Right, so if you look at this now, please bear in mind as well, I'm filming this in 4K. So it's a bit, it's a bit cropped at the moment. Otherwise it'd be a little bit more sand and a little bit more sky. And that would be my shot over a two or three second exposure, just adding a bit of movement in those waves. And it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. You can see in the background, like I said, it's slightly more cropped here than what it will be in the picture. And then I'm just shooting straight out to sea there and opting for portrait orientation as well as landscape orientation and just going for a real minimalistic feel. And I'm even adding my 10 stop filter so I can create two minute exposures just to get a little bit of movement in the clouds. And I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. It's incredible. And do you know what's really weird? The only reason why this place is so quiet because it's a long, long, long 10 minute walk from the car to get to here. 10 minutes, that's all it is. And that's why the place looks like this. Completely, 100% deserted. Absolutely mental mental right okay i've got the 60 to 35 mil lens on so what i'm going to do is try and go for some wider again minimalistic shots and again throw in my six stop filter on there just so i could play around with some extended shutter speeds just a little bit though not mad Yet again, another beach with turquoise water and white sand and not a soul on it. Not a soul. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what I have noticed. There's a tidal bell there. Just there, see it? Oh, who doesn't like photographing tidal bells? Oh, it's not too shabby at all, is it? Not too shabby at all. Look at that for the background. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, look at this sand. This sand is just ridiculous. Look at it. Just incredible. If you like your shelling, this is where you need to be. I mean, that is quite a thing. The tide is at its lowest at the moment. Um, and I'm not gonna be around for the tide to come up to that bell. But what a magnificent structure. Just so cool. This is so impressive. I've only ever seen one tidal bell before and that was on Anglesey. Uh, in North Wales and pretty identical actually but uh, they're pretty cool things to photograph right I'm gonna try I've I've taken a couple of shots nice and wide I've gone in a bit tighter as well with the 70 to 200 mil but I'm gonna try a couple of different things one I want to try and get as low as I possibly can I'm gonna get right down onto the sand if I can 
because I want to try and see if I can get that bell above the horizon. It's going to be a bit of a, a tough ask. And the other thing is I'm going to go up the hill ever so slightly and see if I can lower the bell into the water because I think it'll stand out really nice on a long exposure. So that's my thought process. I'll tell you what, you know, it's a cracking location. Let's have a look. A real cracking location. This is called Boston Beach. I've been coming to Harris and Lewis for years. Never even heard of the place. But I saw it on the map as part of my discovery trip this week. I thought I'd have to come and check it out. I'm so glad I did. Uh, where's my hand there in that camera? There it is. So that in the background is actually an island. That's an island called Little Bonera. So we're on the island of Bonera on the Isle of Lewis. So it's another island. So it, I, hopefully I'm not butchering that name. This is called Bonera, and that out there is an island called Little Bonera. And out there, and that place there in the background is called Flode, Flodai, Flodich, something like that. I'll put the name up again to any Scottish people watching. Apologies for butchering the name. <laughs> but what a place though, what an incredible place. Right, now if I get low enough, I can definitely get that bell above the horizon. I know that this tripod is really good for getting down low as well. I can just click that, click that, and click that. Right, question is, is it low enough? Drop it right down in the sand. All right, now I'm gonna to to take one for the team. Oh, aha, right, now. It works, and I can definitely grab the shot, but the island in the background, which is called, I think, Fodai or something, has pretty much disappeared, so I'll have to Not use that as a feature. Let's have a look. I definitely need a flip out screen. <laughs> that. Boys and girls, he's looking. Pretty damn tasty and that sky is streaking really nice on a two minute exposure. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Come on you. Come on, let's go, hit it. Come on, pal. <laughs> you just take your own time. <laughs> I've clearly made a mistake by coming to this beach on a bank holiday Sunday because if you look very very closely at the far end of the beach there you'll see one other person I oh, know it's all going pear shaped I can see two canoeists coming onto the beach now I've no idea where I'm going to put my towel <laughs> Such a beautiful beach, it really is. Now, looking for 
foreground interest. There are plenty of mackerel trails that I could use as foreground interest. There's a lot of these dark lines contrasting against the white powdery sand. I could use those as foreground interest as well. Lots of options here. However, I've been doing that all week. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. In the background, quite rarely for where I am, there's a, a mountain that's covered in, well, they look like grasses, the green anyway. And it's quite rare, but in this light, it looks terrific. So what I'm gonna do is shoot along the line of the waves against that mountain. So basically I'm using the waves as foreground interest and nothing else. I'm going for a real minimalistic feel. Maybe a two or a three second exposure with a six stop filter on there might work quite nice. It's giving us a nice arc, a nice leading line all the way up to that small mountain area. Hmm, I think this looks very nice, very nice. Now I'm not 100% sure that a two or a three second exposure will work here. And the reason being is because the sea is so calm, it's so flat calm. And this beach is so flat, the water is just meandering in. And it's not giving us that punchy white edge of wave feel. You know, that when I've, I'll have an obvious line. It's meandering from blue to white and then where the sand is wet, it's just black. And it's not very exciting at all. So, to overcome that, what I'm going to do is throw on the 10 stop and see what it looks like with a two minute exposure. I tell you what though, if I didn't have my hat, gloves and coat on, you'd think, you'd think I was in the Bahamas somewhere. Just incredible. And wellies and waterproofs. And thermals. And boxes. <laughs>
It's great when you turn up to places like this, when the conditions aren't as you imagine them. Maybe you've turned up at the wrong time of day, i.e. it's the middle of the day here, and this clearly is best shot at sunset. But I haven't got time to wait to be here at sunset. I've got to be somewhere else. But that doesn't mean to say you can't find a shot. Maybe the tide height isn't as you imagined. As we're landscape photographers, we always complain about the weather and the conditions. Well, maybe that's not perfect. But finding a composition, finding an image, capturing something pretty cool at times like this is what defines you as a landscape photographer.